Odds are good you've seen Mario stomp a Goomba or kick a Koopa shell before, but you might not have seen him punch a giant lady riding a floating banana right in the shins. Super Mario RPG is easily one of the quirkiest adventures the mustachioed plumber has ever been on, rightly becoming a standout when Final Fantasy developer Square first released it nearly three decades ago. Its 2023 remake is an incredibly faithful recreation of that already awesome RPG, with a fresh coat of paint and some small but smart combat updates. Those changes can't completely shake off 27 years of dust, but they do provide a fantastic way for fans like me to revisit this classic, while also letting new folk better enjoy just how wild it is firsthand. Fucking the usual setup, this entertaining story kicks off with Mario rushing to Bowser's keep and immediately rescuing a kidnapped Princess Peach. But before they can return home, a giant sword with a face crashes through the castle roof and sends all three of them flying. From there, Mario has to fight lots of living weapons up to no good and collect seven star pieces in order to save the Mushroom Kingdom. It's not a long tale, taking me just about 12 hours to finish, though I've done so before on Super Nintendo, but the writing is so consistently funny and often off the wall that this essentially unchanged script still had me frequently laughing out loud. Super Mario RPG's turn-based combat is extremely straightforward, pitting you against all sorts of weird and creative enemies, from your standard Mario monsters like Goombas to the skeletal corpse of a Mastodon that has literally zero explanation. It fuses timing-based button prompts into your otherwise recognizable mix of basic attacks and resource-limited spells. That means you'll get a satisfying boost for a well-timed A-press on offense, and take reduced damage or even none at all on defense. This system still rocks, and it's easy to see why it influenced so many games that came after it, from Paper Mario to the South Park RPGs. That said, it's worth mentioning that while it's always very fun, combat is also borderline comically fast a lot of the time, sending you into super easy fights just as quickly as you're likely to finish them. The really interesting encounters are reserved for a fairly wide array of inventive bosses. Those include a strange sort of dog monster that creates clones of your party members, as well as a living bow who cleverly disables buttons on your controller to prevent specific types of moves. They still don't usually pose much of a threat, but boss gimmicks like this shake up battles nicely. Combat is also the place this remake has been altered most substantially. Button timings now give a bigger bonus for a super precise press, even adding a splash damage effect to your basic attacks that made me more thoughtful about how I distributed damage in standard encounters. Chaining together well-timed presses also fills up a gauge to use on powerful new triple moves, each of which comes with an awesome 3D cutscene. These updates don't necessarily make the combat feel as modern or as deep as many of the games inspired by the original, but they do help breathe fresh life into a system that needed a little bit by now. One part of that system that's still a ton of fun is its varied selection of weapons. Rather than only being a statistical increase, new weapons also alter attack animations, and as a result, attack timings. Mario could kick a Koopa shell or smash baddies with a hammer, while the lovable Mallow can go from swinging a stick to crashing cymbals together. Bowser, who rounds out your party alongside the mysterious Gino and Princess Peach herself, has probably the best weapon option, a glove that lets him hurl Mario as a projectile. I loved that each time I switched weapons I had to retrain my muscle memory, which is made easier here by a smart new prompt that guides the timing of each newly encountered move until you nail it a few times. The rub of this extremely amusing weapon system, however, is that you don't have much control over it. There are plenty of fun optional tasks to do and secrets to uncover, but this is generally a very linear game, and each new weapon you find will almost always just be statistically better than the last, with no comparable alternatives to decide between. That's true of your defensive items too, leaving the RPG part of Super Mario RPG a little thin, as you don't really customize your characters much past a single accessory slot. Instead, the lifeblood of this campaign is its variety. It's easy to enjoy some fairly simple combat and progression when you're never in the same setting long enough to ever come near getting bored. You'll jump from classic Mario sewers to a ghost-filled sunken pirate ship, from a minigame where you're barreling down a waterfall collecting coins, to one where you're running up a hill trying to save Princess Peach. From fighting a crazed bomb person to a living wedding cake. 
This world could have so easily crumbled into a hodgepodge of disparate ideas, but instead they come together to make a strangely coherent and delightfully unique whole. Especially when you occasionally remember that this is somehow still a Mario game. Like, here's Mario having to be held back from punching a literal child. Just incredible stuff. Super Mario RPG's new 3D graphics are impressively faithful to the original's pre-rendered 3D art style, and the resulting look is… I don't know, it's fine? I don't mean to undersell it, it can look quite nice, especially in its super cool new cutscenes. But I can't help but feel like some of the original's personality has been lost in the translation here. Models and environments are updated almost one to one, leaving them looking shiny and new, but removing some of the charm the lo-fi pre-rendered look naturally had. When I look at other Switch remakes like Link's Awakening or Live Alive, I end up wishing this one had found a bit of its own flavor inspired by that Super Nintendo look, rather than just making the closest approximation it could manage. One area that has been masterfully modernized, however, is the soundtrack. Super Mario RPG's music has been burned into my brain since childhood, and these new takes on those songs are absolutely great. They're perfectly reverent while adding impressive layers of instrumentation and nuance, capturing their spirits while bringing something new to the table in the exact way I wished the graphics had. And speaking of new, this isn't just the adventure oldies like me might remember. The base campaign has remained relatively untouched in terms of content, but an entirely new post-game lets you explore for secrets you may have missed after the credits roll, while also including some impressive extra challenges to push your limits. Avoiding showing any specific spoilers, that includes extremely clever twists on certain fights that require a deeper use of the combat system and its various mechanics in a way I appreciated. I sort of wish these well-designed encounters hadn't been saved exclusively for an endgame grind, but I like that the added difficulty is there for those left hungry by the main story. There's also a comprehensive monster list to fill out, with check marks and funny little quotes for every enemy you manage to successfully time Mallow's thought peak ability on, giving me a completionist goal to chase even as combat stayed overly easy. However, about a third of the way through the campaign, the menu started suffering from some seriously unexpected frame rate drops. I didn't really run into any technical issues besides this, and it's a little hard to see here, but it was obnoxious enough that managing my party, checking my items, or revisiting all those silly quotes I had collected could feel like a bit of a chore. Which is a bummer. I guess that next-gen Switch still can't get here soon enough. Super Mario RPG is considered a classic for a reason, and this wonderfully faithful remake makes it easy for anyone who missed it in the Super Nintendo era to see why. It's unabashedly odd, reveling in the unexpected with writing that constantly had me bursting out laughing. Its turn-based combat is fairly simple outside of its very clever boss fights, but it's also ultra satisfying to keep your timing string going even when you're plowing through pushovers. And while the updated graphics are equal parts pretty and sort of weirdly unambitious, with some unfortunate menu lag to boot, the new takes on its excellent music are truly exceptional. Super Mario RPG already held up pretty well if you didn't mind a bit of dust on its systems, but now there's no excuse not to see why Mario's most unexpected adventure is still so beloved. For more Mario, check out our review of Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and for more turn-based combat with timing elements, our review of Thirsty Suitors. And for everything else, Keep it right here on IGN.